Aaron Weir here with Vibrant Performance and this is our new catch can. I'm gonna have to take this flange apart to be able to mount this on the inside of our Fox Body Mustang project car. One reason is we need to clock the mounting bracket so that we can have the two fittings in the proper orientation. I need to put a 90 degree bend in this bracket so that I can mount it to the inside of the fender. So I'm gonna take this apart. To take it apart, I've got six screws in the top and they all come out with a three millimeter Allen key. So when I take this apart, I'm gonna take it apart upside down. And there's my dipstick, my bracket. And you'll see there's an O-ring groove on the canister. And there's an O-ring groove with an O-ring on our cap as well. I have six holes, right? There's a ring there, and you can change to any of the six slots to allow you to rotate this bracket. Just about 360 degrees all the way around this. Now the cap can only go on our canister one way. You'll see also underneath our filter element that we can just carefully pick out. There's also an O-ring inside the bottom of that to help try and capture and maximize the efficiency of that filter in an open uh, catch can system. And then we have our baffle inside. You can see that it's perforated, separating both sides of the canister. So to figure out where I want to bend this, I want to go about halfway in between center line of that hole and my outside radius there. So let's go figure out where we want these fittings pointed uh, for EJ setup and we'll clock that flange, we'll put a bend in it, clock it, and put it back together and start figuring out how we're gonna mount this thing. The most ideal way of putting a bend into this bracket is by using a handbrake or using a shop press with a V-block. So I've gone and put my bend in my bracket. Now I'm gonna just put this back together. My filter screen goes back in its little pocket there. Just make sure that it, none of it's sticking up when you put it back in. And then my bracket is going to align on the holes there. My other side, the cap, the O-ring is installed in there and it's gonna go back together just like that. So you have to align that baffle in the middle of the can to separate the two sides. And then I'm just gonna start each screw. Now we're ready to mount this on our inside of our fender. The reason I'm mocking this up with the 90 degree hose ends is just so I can make sure that I have the proper amount of hood clearance. We then proceed to cut a hole where the bottom of our catch can will sit so that EJ has access to the drain plug to drain any captured oil without removing the can. If you start by marking just one hole, you can use it as a reference as the center to center distance is two inches. Using either a drill or a plasma cutter, make the holes for your bracket. So I've got a couple of screws. I've made a little backing plate. Two M6 screws, or a quarter inch screw would also work. It's a quarter inch holes in the bracket. And I'm gonna tuck those through these two holes that I've added in the inside of the fender. And I'm gonna use my little sandwich backing plate and nuts on the inside of the fender to hold it in place. Be sure to fasten your catch can securely so that it doesn't vibrate and come loose. In a, in a vented catch can system, it's a good idea to keep this filter as high as you possibly can in the system so that any oil that may collect through your crankcase is gonna have to come up through these lines and into the can um, to reach this source of uh, atmospheric pressure. So right now EJ has a couple of breather filters on his valve covers. Uh, those aren't really ideal for at the drag strip. I, I've been told that he's been told he has to cover these with some sort of cloth or something to try and prevent oil from escaping through these filters uh, by adding this catch can that should capture all the oil vapor inside this can 
and you shouldn't see any oil coming out of this uh, filter element because the baffle inside is going to capture all that oil inside and then when it gets full you can check it with his dipstick and then drain it from underneath where we placed a hole just inside the bottom of the fender there and you can drain that. So right now I'm just going to take these valve covers off so that we can remove these filters uh, and replace them with weld on uh, aluminum bungs and then we're just going to run a line from each side. Uh, we're also going to be adding a fill port on his uh, one valve cover here so that he has a place to fill up his oil. So the, the reason we're choosing to put the bungs on where the filters are, obviously that's been designed into the filter as a breather. There's a baffle on the inside that uh, prevents oil from splashing up into the filter. So we want to take advantage of that and put our weld bung exactly where the filter is on, on each valve cover. So let's just pull these off and clean them up. So I've removed both valve covers from the engine. I've cleaned them thoroughly to make sure there's no uh, residual oil left inside them that you have off gas from the heat from welding it up. I've taken a couple of our Dash 10 weld bungs and I've turned them down on the lathe a little bit just to make them a little bit shorter to give it a little bit lower profile on this valve cover. So I'm just gonna weld this up and then we'll be able to put these back in the engine, put our Dash 10 male fitting in here and then have our hose end come off of that and feed to our catch can. Uh, I'm gonna be welding this with 5356 filler rod. That's just my own personal preference. I find I get the best results with that filler uh, when welding Vibrance aluminum weld bungs. So when I start the weld, I want to focus more of my arc into the base metal because this is the larger piece of material. And if I put too much arc into my bung, my bung's going to melt away. So to just when you start it, once this gets warmed up, you'll be able to adjust your angle so that you can create a nice little keyhole to follow around that bung. So as I'm going around, I keep an eye on the edges of the weld pool. And if I notice that my weld bung is starting to sink a little bit, I'll try and add the filler on the bung side of the pool to help cool down the bung. So I tack welded this one on just because it's a bigger bung. When I weld around something that I've tack welded, I don't like to start on a tack because as soon as you start on that tack, it'll break it apart. I like to run over my tack welds so that they're easier to cover up, make it look nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna install this back into the engine. I gotta make sure that the gasket uh, lines up with the holes and then just put the screws back in. So I'm just loosening off these screws so I can clock the can towards the front of the car and have these hoses in parallel and kind of have this one come from here and go around into there and then this one's going to come down through here and into my other hose end. For the back of the passenger side valve cover I've got a 90 degree hose end and then on the other side I have a 120 degree hose end because I want to aim that hose coming off of the valve cover down underneath through here. Okay, now we're gonna assemble some uh, dash 10 hose. So this is a 90 degree dash 10 hose end. Uh, you have a B nut. The B nut is the nut that goes on to the end of your hose. You have a nipple nut, right? You, and this nipple nut swivels independent of the hose end. And then this is the socket nut on the end. So we have a wrench specifically for this and we have a wrench specifically for the nipple nut and the bee nut. Uh, I'm gonna put this on my hose. I prefer to hold my bee nut in a set of ice jaws and then I can assemble this into that a little bit easier. 
There's a nice little lead in on the inside of the bee nut. So if your hose is a little bit frayed, you should still be able to capture it inside that lead in. So you can see that it's gonna go slide in. You just work that bee nut onto the end of the hose until the inside you have the hose up against the inside shoulder. So you'll see on the inside of the bee nut, there's a thread. That thread matches the thread on your nipple here, right? So when you slide the nipple inside the hose, you need to make sure that the hose barb goes inside the hose and doesn't cut, catch the edge of your rubber hose on the inside because you can slice it or, or uh, do some damage to the inside of the hose. You don't want any kind of debris getting into the, into the hose when you assemble it. So I just need to work that in a little bit further. Now you can see it's all the way inside. Now I just need to throw it in my vice jaws and assemble. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of lubricant on the hose barb of my nipple. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant on here before I begin to assemble that. Once you have that thread started by hand, then you can go to the wrench. Again, I'm holding the hose from underneath just to make sure and keeping an eye on that braid to make sure it's not being pushed out of the bee nut by the, the nipple that you're threading into it. Thread it in all the way down so that you have a nice little gap there, just a little gap. See some light through there about a sixteenth of an inch or less gap between my nipple nut and my bee nut just in there just a slight little gap so I can see a bit of space and there's your hose in. So now I'm gonna put this back in the car and I'm gonna mock up where this hose is gonna go. I'm gonna mark my hose, make my cut, put my other hose end on and then we're done with this hose. So I've assembled my 90 onto my hose. I'm just gonna let that hose go out the front of the car. Just finger tight, I don't need to make that super tight. And then I'm gonna try and determine how I wanna route this hose to this hose end here. But I also need to consider that there's going to be another hose coming out of there and coming from my other valve cover. So I need to be aware that I don't want to also cover that, but also stay underneath my charge pipe. So if I, I think if I go something like that, that should probably work pretty good. So about there, that's my le length that I want. I'm going to be inside my cap and then that should give me enough space to add a couple of line separators and then uh, make up my other line. I'm just gonna mark this with a Sharpie where I wanna cut it. So I'm marking it about where it's gonna end on the inside of that hose, that B nut on that hose end. So when I cut my hose, I've got my mark there where I marked it with a Sharpie. Um, you could hold this hose, if you had a friend, extra set of hands could hold it for you while you cut it. Um, or you could hold it in a vise, but I don't like to hold it in a vise because I don't want to damage the, the outer braid on the hose. So I'll just uh, cut it myself. So, and that makes a nice clean cut for our other hose end to go on. So I've got my hose made up. I'm just gonna put it back in place and then I can begin mocking up the next hose. That's gonna sit under there like that. I'm gonna have a line separator there and there. So now, now I'm ready to mock up my second hose. So I'm just gonna feed it through where I want it to go underneath these other two hoses and it's gonna go onto my fitting and then the other end is gonna come out somewhere over here by my catch can. I'm gonna add a P-clamp I think on this bracket to hold it there. So I will probably do that next because I wanna make sure that this is exactly being held by the, the P-clamp and then it'll be uh, tied there and then I can finish the rest of this. 
I don't want to cut this yet because I want to, it may change the way that routes once it's being held by that P-clamp. So I'm mocking up this second line. I've got it fastened to my valve cover over here. I've got it running underneath this fuel line here. And I've added a P-cushion clamp uh, to this bracket so that I can help make sure that this hose isn't going to vibrate, isn't going to necessarily rub against stuff, rub up against something it's not supposed to. Uh, like this other fuel line here. So I've got one of my line separators holding the two lines together. I'm going to add another one once this hose assembly is done. So I'm just going to mark where I want to make my cut and then uh, make, pull this apart, make my cut, assemble my hose, put it back together and we're done. Okay, so I'm just going to reinstall this line I'm gonna actually probably fish it through from the other side because it'll probably be a little bit easier. And then I'm just gonna fasten this guy in here. So I need to add my P clamp back there, but before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and fasten this other end. And then I can add my line separators, my peak lamp, and snug everything up, and we're done. So I'm just gonna install my line separators here and finish this off. So I'm not gonna close that down completely until I get the other one started. And I want this to kind of twist down on an angle a little bit. And tighten up all my hose ends. And we're done. So I've just finished installing our catch can setup on this car. We still have access to our oil dipstick so we can check the oil level. If there's any oil showing up on there, we're gonna to wanna to drain the tank from the fitting in the bottom of the tank. And we've added a hole inside the fender so we have access to that drain plug from the bottom of it and we don't have to pull this tank out to drain the oil out of it. That'll keep things a little simple for us at the track especially. This concludes our installation of Vibrant's open loop style catch can. Every catch can includes detailed instructions outlining best practices with easy to follow diagrams for both our open and closed loop catch can designs. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. The only bad question is the one that isn't asked. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new content or installation videos such as this one.